Hi, everyone. A uh, little bit of uh, question and answer time. Um, kind of funny. It's like as soon as I got set down to um, record everything, some guys set up like a wood chipper and <laughs> they're running chainsaws outside. So if you're hearing anything, I'm sorry. But anyway, uh, this is all the time we got for it today. Um, so the first question um, comes from one of my viewers or someone who watches me on DeviantArt. And his question is, uh, I was thinking about possibly pursuing concept art, but I was wondering if I have to be a jack of all trades. I'm asking this because so many artists in that field do different types of work. I'm not that great at mechanical design or environments. And uh, not that I don't want to get better, but I have my weaknesses. Character design is a definite interest for me. Is it possible for me to be a specialist or should I buckle down and learn how to do everything? Um, well, okay. The choices that I've made are really the ones that are suited for me. And like, this is like kind of this huge disclaimer and, and it's just, they might not be for everyone. Okay. Um, I do the, the jack of all trades thing. And I mean, there are some people who are specialists. I mean, there's, there's some people who, who are engineers or architects and all they do is they just work on staircases. Some people just, you know, engineer a particular product. You know, they, there's some people who just, you know, they just design guns all the time. And I guess in the real world, you know, it's it, like whenever you're dealing, dealing with, you know, real physical items, right? If you're actually manufacturing solid items, well, you're selling solid items. So it's possible for you to actually get by on just designing one thing. Uh, with art, though, it's a little harder because, well, art has really... Art has value, but it doesn't have worth, okay? Things that have value are things like, um, the things that have, that have value but do not have worth are no use in a zombie apocalypse, okay? If it's got worth, it's, it's food, it's shelter, it's medical supplies, you know, those are the things that, that we need in a zombie apocalypse, you know, or in an earthquake or a tsunami, those are the things of worth. The things of value are things like gold bullion and um, priceless artwork, and um, I don't know, you, you get the idea, you know, music, those are things of value. So when you have something that, that whenever you're dealing with things that have value, these are things that people place a value on and it gets kind of hard to sell. You know, you have to convince people that it's, you know, worth or it's, it's got the value that, that, you know, you're, you're applying to it. So in regards to being a jack of all trades, um, hard to be picky. The other thing is, the reason why I got into doing sort of jack of all trades stuff is I don't just sit down, like I, I don't just choose to design one character or one gun or this, you know, or this or that. It's just, to me, it's, it's so, I can't get immersed in the project. It's like, yeah, I'm just drawing a, another weapon. I, I'm into story building. I like making, um, I like writing stories, you know, and I like to think of, of you know, a world where, um, you know, a post-apocalyptic world where everybody has been turned into zombies. I mean, okay, that's not very original. Or, you know, the, um, maybe a world where, you know, they never design, they never develop uh, gas, they never, you know, they don't have any fossil fuels, right? So how do you make a world that has no fossil fuels? You know, it's got no coal, it's got no oil, and so, well, that's probably how steampunk came about, right? Steampunk is basically a world with no gasoline. Um, you know, or if, if you want, you can go with like a world where you have, you know, no electricity and everything, even things that are, you know, electrically based would be just, you know, powered by gasoline only, you know, and there's, there's, so, and when you look at say Fallout, right? If you ever played the Fallout series or you've, you know, seen the Fallout game and their post-apocalyptic world, well, the thing is even before the post-apocalyptic world, um, they never developed microprocessors. They had no, well, no microchips and no solid state processors. And as a result, um, all of their technology is powered by, you know, vacuum tubes and alien technology and, and, you know, macro tech. It's big stuff. So, you know, that's what I believe in, you know, in, in terms of, um, you know, trying to be a specialist. I find it's actually easier to be a generalist when you're, you know, you get a lot more, I, I get a lot more creative reign and freedom. I, I just happen to enjoy um, creating that kind of world where it's like, I figure, you know, let's, let's get a new situation and, you know, take one thing out of our, out of our, you know, we can, 
if you're going to be a jack of all trades person, um, it means you have to do a lot of research, you know, and that means you got to look and see what's already out there. You know, if you want to learn, if you're going to, if you want to be able to draw, you know, firearms and cars and people and furniture and, you know, uh, outdoor environments, you know, and nat nature and that kind of thing, then you wind up spending a lot of time on the internet and, you know, looking up these different places. And I'm not so much a creator. I'm not a creator. You know, I don't even think of myself as, as a creator. I'm more like, um, I'm an editor. I'm an arranger. You know, I simply, uh, I, I don't create things. I'm not, a, I don't make anything that's original. I don't kind of sit there in, in, in like a completely isolated room with no internet and nothing and just like in a dark, dark box and just kind of come up with something that's completely original because I've never seen it before. You know, I'm, I'm not like that. Um, instead, for me, research is like, like if I were a chef, you know, I will go to the grocery store and I'll see, well, what do they got on special? What looks good to eat? You know, what looks tasty? What suits my fancy? And, you know, and I'll pick up those things. I'll bring them home and, you know, cook them on my stove. And, and it's really, my job is not to grow food, is not to grow, you know, vegetables and rear cattle or any of that kind of stuff. I'm simply the person who cooks the food, bring, you know, wash clean, bring it together figure out the right proportions, I make up the, the recipe as I go along. You know, that is what a, a chef does. A chef is not a farmer. And so when you're doing artwork, you know, and, and you, you want to be a concept artist and you're, you're trying to create a world, um, you got to spend some time looking on the internet to find, you know, it's like going to the grocery store. You're going to find all the little things that suit your fancy. And, um, you know, you find a way to, to, to kind of, you, you got to find a way to take these things and put them together and make kind of a cohesive world that is, um, you know, that's convincing. People want to be immersed in this world. So that's, um, uh, that's, that's what, you know. So anyway, you're saying, you know, you're not good, you're not great at mechanical design or environments. Um, you know, it's, then it's time to spend, you know, some time on something like, say, world.guns.ru. World.guns.ru. It's a great site. Um, you know, uh, there's also theboxotruth.com which is this other site which talks about, you know, firearms penetration. World.guns are used as giant database of firearms. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, whenever I do a, a sci-fi and I want to learn about um, spaceships, you know, I think, well, what have we got with current technology? Can we take current technology and extend it? You know, it's, like I say, I'm not a creator. I simply look and see what is what have we already made, and then I extend upon it, or I mix things together, and that's... That's how it works. So, you know, I same thing with character design. Like whenever if I the other thing I found is if I do a lot of other things and I do world building and that sort of thing, um, then it's it's actually easier for me to come up with a character design if I make an environment and I know what the conditions are, what the weather's like, and that kind of thing. It's like I I can kind of imagine well what kind of creatures live here and what kind of cities are built here and. And you know, I can kind of evolve all the things that live within this environment. I can evolve the plants to live with this environment within you know these weather conditions and 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 lithic um, you know like uh, geological conditions and whatnot. Um, I can evolve things to to suit a place, and then I can evolve more and more things to suit that place. And and so character design to me is just like a little you know, it's like the last little bit. You know, it's like because I've evolved him to, to, you know, to work and live in that area, you know, and, and the, the, the tools and things that he carries with him, you know, his weapons and firearms and, 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 you know, like vehicles and things that he uses and carries on a regular basis, clothing, his uniforms, the things that, you know, his protective uh, equipment, that stuff is all evolved, you know, to kind of help him cope with, you know, living in this, this, this new and hostile environment. So I could never just be a character designer because to me that would be like just, you know, I, I it would be like if I was a chef. You know, all I ever focused on was just all divs. You know, and like that. You know, or I simply focused on you know desserts. I guess there are some people who are dessert chefs, and they they have like a huge plethora. That's the thing. Is like if you're a dessert chef, then you wind up having to to to, to you know deal with the whole um, the whole spectrum of desserts that you can have out there. So even then, you know, it's it's um you're still having to you know always try and broaden your horizon, or things get boring really fast. Okay, so uh, the other questions uh, I have, you know, people are asking where, you know, about, say, you know, box drawing. I had another video which was on uh, called Box Travaganza. And, 
If you're trying to learn how to get rid of the lines, then layers. Pure and simple, use layers. You know, do the box stuff to get the right framework and get the right shape. And then afterwards, remember how I do that shape cutting tool stuff? You can just put the, put the layer, the line layer on top, do the shape cutting stuff underneath. At least the shape cutting stuff will follow, you know, the lines of the boxes. Then at an early stage, you get rid of those construction lines. You look at your shapes and you try and make sense, try and turn those, those, those flat shapes back into three-dimensional shapes by the way that you cut them. Like, remember that you're always suggesting, you know, information detail. Anyway, there's not quite enough time to show how that would work. Um, but anyway, do take a look at how I handle some of my shape cut, you know, some of my shape cutting uh, tutorials, some of the fashion ones and whatnot. And um, maybe I'll have to just do a dedicated one on that later. Um, okay, and so uh, another question, which was, um, you know, I got a couple of people who are interested in, you know, my Wacom setup, how I've gotten, um, I managed to get, you know, the foot pedals to work and, and do all those Wacom driver hacks. And there's a reason why it's like I haven't put it out there on the internet and, and whatnot. And it's because it's just, it's really hack, it's really hacky. It's like held together with bubble gum and duct tape. And it's like, okay, I'm using... Uh, PP Joy. PP Joy is like a library which um, you know you install it and it gives you virtual joysticks. So I'm using PP Joy, which is like you know this open source or, or closed source thing, blah blah, which you know it, it let it lets you um, programmatically control a virtual joystick. Um, I'm using a Wacom tablet DLL, which is custom. It's a stubbed DLL. So there's one guy who was asking, you know, how did I hack into the library and how did I make it react to controls in a way that I want. I simply stubbed the DLL, and so um, there's this one site on the code project. I did a Google search, and I looked for um, proxy DLL generation or stub DLL generator um, for C++. It was a C++ proxy DLL generator, and um, the way it works is you simply feed it the existing Wacom tablet.dll. It looks at it, finds all the DLL entry points, it creates the necessary code, and then um, Bob's your uncle. You can take that DLL, throw it into your, um, you know, into the same directory of the program that you want to, you know, use it for. And um, what it does is, you know, it 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 allows you kind of to go through. It allows you to pass through this this DLL and still access the original DLL function. So it's a stub. It's a stub DLL anyway. I don't want to explain it when there's, you know, better better explanations for it on the internet. But um, it's uh, it's yeah. I'll I'll just paste the link in the uh, in the description in the video description um and it's again why i kind of don't want to you know give this whole thing out is because it's just it's just so troublesome it's like i tell you it takes it could take a person like two hours to, it could take me like two hours to help walk people through setting it up i've done this before i've walked people through setting it up and the other problem is that it doesn't work on every program it's not just on photoshop it doesn't it doesn't work on just every program it's only work i've only got it working for tvp animation pro because of you know <laughs> because of, of all the functionality that is exposed to the tablet, I haven't bothered to do it with other programs because I simply don't want, I don't have these programs, I don't want to use them, I don't want to buy them. Um, other people do not want to buy TV Paint because it's not a cheap program. You know, it's it's a fairly price, price program, but, you know, it's not cheap. It's like, you know, $900 for the pro version. And so most people are like, $900! And, you know, it's like, that's, that's, it's it's a really stiff you know price you know for a lot of people and I can understand them not wanting to do that. Plus, um, you know it's not just that. There's like the stealth pedal, the IK Multimedia stealth pedal that I have. It's like you know it's like a one hundred to two hundred dollar item, um, plus a Roland EV five which plugs into it for the smoothing control. That's another you know maybe fifty to one hundred dollar item. Um, the Cintiq, a thousand dollars. You know. I thousand dollars i mean i can get it to work with a wacom as well but it won't work with it will have to be an intuos it does not work on bamboo i know that much and so you know it's like it's you see what i mean it's like it's fucking troublesome right it's like it's really hard to just get it to work on just any other and any system and eh, you know it's like not many people you know the average person my average viewer is not going to want it so anyway you know that's that's pretty much all the time we have uh i think that's all the questions anyway so, um, yeah, anyway, until next time, and uh, I'll talk to you later, guys. Um, keep asking questions.